I'm called Rebecca Namitala, but my AKA is Lady Bizo. So Lady Bizo is a slang for Becky. So I just, I was told, my, my first, um, one of the first most eventful radio shows that I've ever done was a hip hop show. So when I went to actually do that show, their bosses told me they wanted my name to actually be turned into hip hop slang because I was going to work for the mostest hip hop and R&B station. So mostest hip hop and R&B station, I did not know what to use because I was coming from a Christian TV and radio and I was joining uh, mainstream radio and it was the first of its kind for teenagers, a radio strictly for teenagers. So they told me to actually change my botanical name and get a slang, a youthful slang. That is how I got Lady Bizo. Bizo for Becky, like, you know, how you say house for hizo. So I got Lady Bizo. Well, Becky or Lady Bizo is Rebecca Namitala in real life. I'm Rebecca Namitala. I'm a second last born of uh, six children. That is uh, five girls and one boy who apparently passed away. Our uh, one boy passed away. May his soul rest in eternal peace. Um, of course, raised up by a mom and a dad. And then my mom is a secretary. My dad was an accountant. And then, of course, I was, uh, I, I went through the ordinary school. Like I went through kindergarten, primary for seven years, and then went to secondary for six years, and then went to Macquarie University in Uganda, Kampala, because I am Ugandan. So I went through university and I did a bachelor's in communication from there of course life told the story best so basically I'm just born the way I am and I'm glad to actually be here um, I began radio in my senior four those who have been to Uganda know that we have senior four I don't know whether we have senior four here in Kigali but in senior four the, the normally when you finish your exams the senior four exams you wait for a long time to join the high school S5 and S6. So in that you know, situation, I was back at home. I didn't have a job like very many of my friends. My friends had family members who would give them job offers to go do internship, to go to cleaning, to do office messenger. There was all these opportunities. I didn't have the same opportunity. But because I really loved singing and dancing, I used to listen to radio presenters a lot. So in my senior four vacation, my senior four holiday, as I waited for my exams to come back, I actually ended up listening to a particular radio station and that radio station had particular presenters. But all of a sudden, I listened this probably week or two and there was this particular presenter who was missing. And I wanted to find out. And they had a, a, a number we had written down where you want to ask for requests for songs and everything. I called that very number and I asked them, if I could come to the station, I wanted to find out where the station was. So they told me, well, come to this road, this street, in this area, and show up in Kampala. So I actually went there. I told my mom I was going, some, I was going to do something in town. I told her I needed money. She gave it to me. And she told me, come back home early because you're the only one who's probably at home. Everyone else was going to work and to school. So I went. When I went there, they asked me, what do you want? I told them I want to see the boss. They told me, are you an appointment? I told them, no, I'm not. So they were like, well, if you're not on appointment, blah, 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 blah. I told them it's an emergency. I need to see the boss. Okay, sit right there. I was young. So they look at, they're looking at this teenager. So the reception is supposed, they took their time, but eventually the boss came downstairs. A very huge tall guy showed up and said, uh-huh, what do you want? I just told him, I want to work. Work where? On radio, that's why I'm here. What makes you think you can actually work? Because I've been listening to the station for almost my entire holiday. So I literally know what you guys have been doing. I know what the presenters say on radio. I know the slogan. I know the frequency. I know the content. He was like, mm, show up. So he took me up to his office and he just gave me an interview about three minutes to say something about the Twin Towers that were bombed way back. And of course, I utilized only one minute. I didn't know how to talk for long. So he was like, well, according to what I see, you are good enough. From that point on, I began radio. He took me to studio, introduced me to a, a radio guru. His name is Valerie Okecho. He's actually in Uganda as well. And then because of Valerie, I became, I mean, Becky. I used to call myself Becky the Abundantly Victorious because it was a Christian radio. So I felt like I needed to show that I'm a victorious woman and here I am on radio and I'm doing this thing. But it was an incredible journey for me.
maybe I didn't want to do exactly radio, but one thing is for sure, I wanted to be in the public. Why? I used to always be in the mirror. My mom always told me, you spend a lot of time talking to yourself in the mirror. We don't know why, but I'd always be there and I'd go like, well, it's a beautiful morning. And if you are definitely having a bad morning, you can actually wake up and do some running. So she would always find me in the mirror, even when I was a little girl. So she knew I would like to talk to people. Why? Even when I was back at home all by myself, she would, when I was young, she would buy me uh, an empty blackboard and then put it somewhere in the compound. I'd always ask her to get me chalk. So I'd always write to one, and I'd always be, you know, explaining what I'm writing to an empty crowd. Like I'd, I'd always be telling, you know, the chairs, the empty chairs, well, this is one plus one, and when you divide by three, and then you add on and multiply. So she always knew that maybe she, I'm going to end up being something that is, that is maybe a teacher, or something, but in the public, because I always showed signs and symptoms of somebody who loves people, and I enjoy people, really. Personally, I love challenges. When I'm no longer challenged, I don't feel like I'm making, I'm making any meaningful value, personally. And it's, 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 really, it's really important for us to recognize that there's always opportunities out there. For you to decline an opportunity is for you to say you don't want to actually venture out there and learn new things and involve yourself in new stuff. So all my years on radio in Uganda, I felt like i had done it all. I've been on Christian TV, I've been on Christian radio, I've been on mainstream TV, I've been on mainstream radio. I've actually, you know, mingled with people, artists, I mean, you know, CEOs, I mean, so many people, DJs. I, I, I do not know how I can start to explain how much I realized that I, was, I had done it all. I felt like, so what next? So when an opportunity came up that there was a slot for an English radio presenter, somebody tip tapped me and told me, I, do you think you might be interested? I'm like, oh my God, am I? Rwanda, I've been there before with my pastors. We've been there before to sing, to dance. I mean, it was an experience of a lifetime, but that was just a week. So you want me to go there and live my entire life in Rwanda? I mean, I had like two months to think about it until they actually called me and told me the opportunity was actually closing down. If I had to take it, I had to actually make up my mind there and then. And of course, being, being a Christian girl and believing that God does things in uh, mysterious ways, I was like, this is for me right here. I grabbed the opportunity, packed my bags, put my few clothes in there, and I'm like, Uganda and Rwanda is like twins. Yeah, it's like one twin and another. Anytime I feel like, man, I need, I need to actually get some more stuff, I did not get enough stuff. I mean, the things that I was worried about, I don't have to be worried about. The deals that I used to get in Uganda, I can still get anyway. Why? I'm not in Oklahoma, I'm not in an Alaska, neither am I in Canada. I'm just in the neighboring country. So I was like, grab it already i seize the opportunity and here i am i am doing my best to actually settle in whatever i feel like i'm not comfortable with i'll always tell people to actually help me so i can actually relate with what i'm comfortable with or what i'm usually accustomed to mainly the food then probably the lifestyle hanging out i'm a prayerful person i love praying i love praising so i look for areas where there are people who energize me and i'm, I'm full of vibes really so i love places where i can actually go and vibe so whenever they actually take me out and I'm going to a place where there's so much vibe, positive vibes especially, I'll be there. The message I'd like to give to the young people who love to be on radio, I think is to just go out for it. And the earlier you do it, the better. Many of these things that we actually do, if you don't do it early enough in life, you'll always feel an emptiness because you've always had a passion to speak to people, energize people, you know, try to make sense out of whatever situation. And if you're naturally born to do something, no matter how many times you try to brush it off and do away with it, it will still come back and knock. So it will still come back knocking. It's only wise for you to jump onto it, do it like never before, and don't cease. So anyone out there who's listening to the sound of my voice and seeing me right now, I'd like to just encourage them. The earlier you do so, the better. And look for mentors. Look for a mentor in every area, not just radio, but in every area, in every field. Look for somebody you admire in that field. Knock on their doors every day. Persist, even if they are busy. Tell them you are the one that I've chosen to mentor me on this journey. And if it is Lady Bizo, I'm right here. I mean, I'm here for anyone who actually wants to start their radio journey. I'm here to make it happen for them because freely I was given. So freely I'm giving out to other people as well. 
I know that uh, very many people have actually called me up, those who have gotten the opportunity to get my number, to get my WhatsApp. They'll call you up and tell you, that show you just did, it just brought me out of a very bad situation. So in my mind, I'm like, I was even sad. I was even white, I was broke. I hadn't paid my rent. I was due on a particular loan. I mean, when, when people call me up and tell me that, that you know that show you did right there, I just feel like it gave me so much energy to just go back out there and give my job another try and give my husband another opportunity and give my children another try. Like when I hear people tell me that, even if it's just one person in three years, that is for me enough because there are so many who would probably have told me the same thing, but they don't have access to me. They don't have my number, my email, my Twitter, my WhatsApp. They do not know, but they just listen to this girl on radio and they're just energized. They just feel there's positivity out there. So for me, that is what wakes me up every morning to come and be on radio because I know there is only one person that probably God has woken me up for to take them out of that suicidal experience, to take them out of that negative situation and to pull their moods on a probably another level level altogether so anytime any day and besides my pastor always says forced joy is better than genuine sorrow you rather force the joy so no matter how devastated and disappointed I am when I go behind this microphone right here I just make sure I am in my highest spirits ever highest spirits whatsoever I don't care what I've been through where I'm coming from what experience I had while I was making my way to the radio as long as I'm on the radio it's gonna be a different story altogether so I've been on radio since 2007, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, name it, I'm here.